Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Pere, 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 pere. Okay, we are going to start with this last session of this week number three. So we are um, going to end this week and then we are going to uh, have just four more days in which we are going to work um, in this course. So we are almost at the end. We are really, really... Um, like near the end. So we're just going to end the session to complete the week number three. Then we are going to have four more days, in this case, one more week, and then we are going to end or complete this course and we are going to be done with this uh, month. So it is um a couple of days because uh, we have, three weeks in this course. So we have like a couple of days working on this information and we are almost at the end. So it's something very, very uh, happy to feel that we are uh, at the end of this uh, process. You are going to continue with other process, but um, in this case, you are like a more, we can say like near the, the end. So that's, that's very satisfying. So yesterday we were talking about the um, the modifiers and we were working also on the different exercises that you have uh, on the platform. Now we are going to continue with the modifiers because uh, yesterday uh, we were talking about them and just begin with the information. Now we are going to continue with that information because we have a lot of things to talk about the modifiers. And in this case, you are going to see what is the information that we have here on the document related to this topic. That is this one. We have just a couple of ideas here related to the uh, modifiers. So in this case, we have the following information. Uh, that the modifiers are words that modify the sentence meaning. Uh, the purpose of the modifiers is to make sentences more descriptive or detailed. And also they can make sentences, um, in this case, the meaning more like, uh, or in this case, clearer, and obviously make a sentence more specific or simply make it more engaging. So this is the first part that we have about the modifiers. And <clears throat> we are going to begin from this part, that is the modifier phrases. That is the last thing that we were talking about. So now we are going to continue from this part. So in this case, we have different examples of modifiers. We have the uh, single word modifiers. And in this case, we have the modifier phrase. Now, we are going to say that uh, we can also use clauses as modifiers. These two are generally either adverbial or adjectival and can look like, um, we're going to see the examples to look like, um, how can we use this kind of clauses? También podemos utilizar cláusulas para eh, tratarlas como si fueran modificadores, para que funcionen como modifiers. También van a ser de la misma manera. Puede ser eh, una cláusula adverbial o una cláusula que lleve adjetivos. And we are going to see three different examples of this information.
So we are going to see the examples. We have the first example and it says, when the sun rises, when the sun rises. Next one, who wore gray jeans? Who wore gray jeans? And the last one, with excitement in her eyes. Ok, in this case, uh, cuando estamos hablando de las cláusulas, estamos hablando de partes específicas de una oración. Sabemos que una oración es un, eh, es un pedazo, ¿verdad? O es un grupo de palabras que están juntos y que tienen todas las funciones eh, propias para darnos una información. Llevan un sujeto, un verbo, un complemento y... Esa eh, es la forma en la, en la que creamos una oración simple. En el caso de las cláusulas es cuando esa oración se divide en dos partes. We have two different kind of clauses. Um, one is like the main part of the sentence and the other one is like is something that we can add that uh, gives more information about the main sentence. But at the same time, it is not like very necessary to write this information And in some cases, we can, like, um, use these ones, uh, like, individual. Podemos utilizar estas partes de la oración de manera individual. Y la oración principal, pues, en ese caso, aunque le quitemos su última parte, o sea, su cláusula, va a tener un significado propio. Pero en muchos de los casos, las cláusulas que se les agregan, o sea, la segunda parte, no puede funcionar ella sola porque no tiene todos los elementos que necesita, necesita una oración. In this case, when you are seeing this kind of clauses or this kind of sentences, for example, when the sun rises, in this sentence, you don't have a complete information because you are not saying what is the point in this sentence. Who wore gray jeans? We're talking uh, about someone, but what about that person? We don't have a specific idea about that person. We we just are saying that who wore gray jeans, but what else? And in the last one, with excitement in her eyes. But we don't know what we are talking about with this kind of sentences. So in this case, are part of a main sentence. So we need to create something else to complete this idea. And we are going to see some examples of modifiers in a complete sentence. So we are going to see two examples of a complete sentences using modifiers. So we are going to see these two examples. In the number one we have, we waited until the last minute to mention our concerns. Okay, in this case, we can make this sentence um, without this part until the last minute, this one. And if we take this out, we can have the sentence, we waited to, to mention our concerns. Esperamos para mencionar nuestros, um, podemos decir, uh, nuestras preocupaciones pero eh, le agregamos until the last minute to give more information about the things that we were doing. 
esperamos hasta el último minuto para mencionar nuestras preocupaciones. So in this case, we can like have this um, sentence as a main, like main idea related to um, the concerns. So in this case, it's just talking about a, a main idea with extra information. So that's why we have, we waited until last minute to mention our concerns. Then we have the second one. And in the second one, we have the kid with green sneakers kick the ball. Again, we are adding information here in this part. So in this case, we are saying who is the person that kicked the ball? En esta tenemos también que hicieron una acción, pues patearon la pelota o el balón. Ahora, ¿quién fue el responsable de hacerlo? Si nosotros quitáramos esa información, no, no sabríamos quién es la persona que pateó el balón. Simplemente estamos diciendo que alguien pateó el balón. But if we add this extra information or this um, clause or this phrase, we have an, a clear idea about the, the person that is uh, doing the action, that in this case is the kid with green sneakers. Now we are going to see some examples of modifier clauses working in sentences. So we are going to see other examples. So we are going to see other examples. My sister won the contest and she had hope. Okay, in this sentence, we have two parts and we are going to mark this one. The first part of this sentence is complete. My sister won the contest. And we know that she won something and that's it. It is not necessary to add something else. But we add extra information in the clause that we have after the comma. Agregamos información extra a las oraciones después del co de una coma porque ahí es donde van las cláusulas. Las cláusulas siempre se van a dividir por una coma. Entonces, aquí ya tenemos una oración completa. My sister won the contest. Mi hermana ganó el concurso. Pero le agregamos algo extra. As she had hope. Como ella lo soñó o lo deseó. So in that case, it is like uh, we can function without the extra information, but we want to add that information to make an emphasis in the things that we are explaining. 
Now, second example. The pedestrian who had been waiting for 15 minutes didn't step aside. Okay, in this one, we have a long statement or a long part of this sentence. That is this one. So this is the clause. The pedestrian didn't step aside. El eh, peatón no cruzó. Simplemente podríamos tener esa parte de la oración. But we add something else. Who had been waiting for 15 minutes. Que había estado esperando por 15 minutos. Entonces, la oración completa nos queda. El peatón que había estado esperando por 15 minutos no cruzó. So in that case, we have extra information in the middle of the sentence. So that's why we are using the modifiers because they are giving us extra information to make clear the idea that we are explaining to someone else. Now, we are going to see the structure of the uh, modifiers. So... How are modifiers structured? So in this case, modifiers are placed right beside the noun. They are modifying. Usually, this means right before or after the noun. So in this case, the modifiers are like um, close to the noun, before or after. But everything or uh, always it is like close to to the noun. Siempre va a estar cerca del nombre que está modificando. En este caso puede ser antes o después, pero siempre, siempre tiene que aparecer cerca del nombre que eh, va a modificar. For example, my cat is, um, no, in this case, we need to add something else. So let me put here, my my young cat is always by my side. So I am modifying the word cat, so I am adding something else. My young cat is always by my side. The girls order a pizza without sauce. The girls order a pizza without sauce. So in this case, 
here we have the modifier. And here we have the modifier. Siempre tiene que estar antes o después del nombre. En este caso, en el primero podemos ver cómo cat es el nombre que vamos a modificar. Entonces le agregamos young, que es joven. Y en el siguiente, nuestro nombre que vamos a modificar es la palabra pizza. So in that case, we add the information after the uh, noun that we are modifying. So in that case, we have two spaces in which we can write the uh, modifiers. One is before the noun and the other one is after the noun. This is also true when they are modifying a verb or adjectives. So remember that in this case, when we are talking about English or we are learning English, we have different categories of the same words. So in this case, we can also modify verbs and adjectives. Podemos modificar verbos y adjetivos también, no simplemente un nombre. So in this case, we have a lot of things to do. Uh, let me see. Just give me a moment. Okay, so in this case, we are going to see how to modify the verb in the adjectives. So we have two examples. He bought a bright blue band. He bought a bright blue band. So in this case, we have bright here. And the second one, I told the students to listen carefully to the lecture. I told the students to listen carefully to the lecture. And in this case, we have carefully here. When a modifier isn't in this position, it can make the sentence confusing for a reader or listener. This is known as misplaced modifier and we are going to see um, some examples also of the misplaced uh, in which we can make um, some mistakes in, in the place in which we are adding the modifier. So that's why we need to, to uh, understand that in some cases we can make this mistake, but it is not something that we cannot like uh, improve.
So we have here some examples. Example number one. They bought a car for my sister. They call Pam Kim. Okay, in this case, how can we um, translate or understand this statement in Spanish? ¿Cómo podríamos nosotros interpretar esta oración? What is the meaning of pumpkin? A uh, calabaza. Uh, dice que el carro de la hermana no parece una calabaza, llamó una calabaza. Mm -hmm. Por ahí va la cosa. Dice que ellos compraron un carro para su hermana y ellos llamaron a calabaza. Así lo podemos traducir. Ellos compraron un carro para mi hermana y llamaron a calabaza. That is why we are making a mistake in this statement. So, we need to change something in the sentence to make it more clear. Porque aquí nosotros entendemos que le compraron un carro a una persona. Pero la última parte como que no se entiende. ¿Por qué llamaron a calabaza o por qué llamaron una calabaza? That's the eh, mistake. Entonces, vamos a ver cómo quedaría de forma correcta esta oración. But in this case, I'm going to... Let me change this one. In this case. They bought a car. That is the same part. They bought a car that they call, that they call pumpkin for my sister. Ellos compraron un carro que llamaron calabaza para mi hermana. Entonces, aquí ya entendemos que el carro es el que se llama calabaza, no que llamaron a una calabaza. Entonces, puede que no suceda de alguna vez o de vez en cuando que eh, nosotros entendemos la idea, ¿verdad? De lo que queremos decir o entendemos lo que queremos expresar, pero no siempre se nos va a entender. No siempre otra persona va a entender perfectamente lo que nosotros le, le estamos explicando. So that's why we need to understand how to create this kind of sentences using the modifiers and in which places they are going to function. Ya dijimos que tiene que ir siempre antes o después del nombre que está modificando o antes o después del verbo que modifica o antes o después del adjetivo que va a modificar. That is the, the, the only rule that we need, eh, we need to follow with this kind of topics because you need to, to be very specific of the words that you are like expressing or the things that you are going to say. Now, we are going to see two different types of um, modifiers. Vamos a ver dos tipos de modificadores. They have very specific uh, nouns. And obviously, they have like very, um, how can we say, like very specific details related to this uh, type of uh, modifiers. Mm -hmm. Let me give me a moment. It's, something is happening.
Una pregunta, Miss. Tell me. Este, en esa oración que digitó en rojo, prácticamente es como intercambiar las palabras de la oración en negrito para darle el sentido correcto. Así lo dijo, ¿verdad? Sí. Pero, pero si le agregamos otra, otra palabra que no está en la negrita, no hay ningún problema. No, en ese caso no hay problema, porque nosotros lo que podemos hacer es partir la oración. Así, tenemos dos partes acá. Entonces, esto que está aquí es lo que yo necesito eh, aclarar, porque esto yo ya lo entendí. They bought a car for my sister. Ellos compraron un carro para mi hermana. Ahora, ¿dónde voy a agregar yo esta información? Como yo estoy hablando del carro, entonces tengo que irme directamente para donde está la palabra car. Entonces, separo por acá. Y lo único que yo voy a hacer es agregarle como una conexión. That. Entonces, yo aquí agrego la misma frase, pero le agrego la conexión y no hay ningún problema. Lo que vamos a hacer es agregar o quitar cosas que tal vez no nos vayan a hacer que nosotros nos confundamos. Entonces, no hay problema con que le agreguemos algo más a esa información. Ajá, entonces, los conectores son los que le podemos agregar ahí, no, no otra cosa. Exactamente. No le podemos agregar ideas nuevas porque entonces ya estaríamos cambiando la oración. Pero eh, si le agregamos conectores para que la idea esté mejor, that's better, pero no ideas nuevas. Ok, thank you. Miss. You're welcome. So in this case, we're going to see this one. Ah, uh, but I need to change the color again. This one. So we have two different types. There are the squinting. The squinting and dangling modifiers. Son dos tipos de modificadores. We are going to see what are they, what is like the importance of them, and why we need to know something about this kind of uh, modifiers. One type of misplaced modifier is known as dangling modifier. A dangling modifier is a modifier that doesn't modify any specific word in the sentence. En este caso, eh, los dangling modifiers no modifican nada. En realidad no están modificando algo en específico. Puede que nosotros solo lo utilicemos para hablar de algo en específico, pero en este caso no está modificando nada. Y por eso es un, un uh, mistake. Because in this case, it's like two different ideas. Like we have two different ideas and we make uh, one sentence with those two ideas. Uh, for example, we are saying, I want to listen a song, but I eat potatoes. Quiero escuchar una canción, pero comí papas. Entonces, no hay como una conexión entre esas dos ideas. Entonces, el dangling modifier es una frase que nos serviría muy bien en, otro, en otras ocasiones, pero que en este caso las estamos utilizando mal y no nos está dando eh, la idea correcta. So, in this case, it is not modifying anything. It is just like a part of a sentence. That's it.
we are going to see some examples. So we are going to see uh, how these functions, because it's kind of weird to use this kind of a uh, sentence without knowing that they are not making sense together. So we have this one. After reading the book, I thought the movie was great. Aquí estamos diciendo, después de leer o de haber leído el libro, pensé que la película estaba bien. But in this case, it's not like they have the same um, meaning in this case. They are not forming uh, a specific sentence. In this case, we need to change uh, things in this kind of sentences. But the downlink modifier is this one. After reading the book, we can make another kind of sentences with this kind of phrases, but in this case, it's not like a uh, kind of, I don't know, like we then don't have the, the complete idea about the uh, things that they are saying. Maybe after reading the book, I went to, to the cinema to see the movie and I thought the movie was great. After reading the book, I decided to make, um, a document explaining different points of the book. After reading the book, I decide to read another novel. But we need to match the ideas with the second part of the sentence. But in this case, we are not matching the idea. Next one, before leaving. A squirrel across the sidewalk. Here, before leaving, antes de irme, porque aquí estamos hablando de nosotros mismos. Una ardilla cruzó la calle. But in this case, what is the, the purpose of this sentence? I am not giving like very um, specific information because I was talking about something that I was doing, but then I was talking about something else. Estaba hablando de mí y luego me pasé a otra cosa. So in that case, it's not possible to do these kind of things because it's going, it's going to be kind of confusing. So in this case, the downlink modifiers aren't the only type of misplaced modifiers. Another type is known as a squinting modifier. This kind of modifier is unclear because it, it is placed in a way that makes it just as applicable to the word before it um as it is to the word following it. So in, in this case, we are talking about that the other kind of modifier no, el, el, el otro tipo de, de modificador que no está bien eh, puesto en la oración, lo que hace es no ser muy claro y eh, o decir exactamente dónde tiene que ir posicionado porque solo lo hace como aplicable a ciertas palabras que están antes de, del modificador. But in this case, it's not... Uh, eh, related to the two different ways in which we can um, write the modifiers. In this case, it's just like something unclear.
Entonces, en ese caso, al, po al posicionar este modificador de esa forma tan imprecisa, lo que hacemos es aplicarla simplemente a, eh, a antes de la palabra. Ya no podríamos aplicarla a después. Entonces, aquí es donde se, se hace la confusión. And in this case, we have these examples. We have here, the kids who play at the playground sometimes bought ice cream. Here we have the modifier, the word sometimes. Amy hope when class was over. Amy hoped when class was over. She could check her phone. She could. Check here phone. And we have the phrase when class was over. Ahora, ¿cómo haríamos nosotros o cómo deberían de quedar estas oraciones? Because in this case, um, or in this moment, we are thinking like, what is the mistake or how we need to, to change something? Because it just makes sense. But the thing is that they are making a confusion here. So we are going to change the sentences and we are going to um, make it more clear. So in this case, We are going to have two different forms. Vamos a hacer dos diferentes eh, maneras en las que podemos aplicar este modificador. En el caso de la primera, el modificador es sometimes. En el caso de la segunda, when class was over. Entonces, para arreglarlo, para que se vea mejor o para que se entienda mejor, en el primer caso vamos a escribirlo de esta forma. You know that we are using the word sometimes. And in the case of the adverbs, we know that sometimes is this kind of word that we can uh, write in different places. Cuando hablamos de los adverbios, sabemos que estos van en un lugar específico. Pero el único que se puede mover entre la oración es el adverbio o la palabra sometimes. Sometimes puede ir en diferentes lugares de la oración. Entonces, vamos a escribir como primera palabra sometimes. We add a comma, the kids who play at the playground bought ice cream. This one is together. Ok, aquí está ya la parte o la diferencia. Entonces, el sometimes es el único que se va a mover y se va a mover al inicio de la oración. Sometimes the kids who play at the playground both ice cream. Or we can have another sentence and it says the kids who sometimes played. Acuérdense que los adverbs siempre van a ir en medio, ¿verdad? De lo que es el sujeto y el verbo. Por eso es que en este caso está incorrecto, porque nuestro sujeto quedó allá al principio de la oración y nos llevamos el sometimes hacia la última parte donde no hay un sujeto. Ahora lo vamos a arreglar y lo vamos a poner en el lugar que corresponde. The kids who sometimes 
play at the playground. Ok, so aquí ya tenemos arregladas las oraciones. Podemos hacerlo de las dos formas. Ahora, con la segunda, tenemos la frase When class was over. Tenemos esa cláusula o esa parte de la oración que necesitamos ver dónde la vamos a agregar. Lo mismo va a pasar con esta oración. Podemos hacerlo al inicio de nuestra oración o al final. Tiene que ir o al, o al inicio o al final. So we are going to make two sentences. The first one, when class was over, Amy hoped she could check her phone. She could check her phone. O podemos tener la segunda opción, Amy hoped She could check her phone when class was over. Ahí ya están de la manera correcta y estamos haciendo la función principal del modifier. That the principal function or the objective or the main thing about the modifier is to give more information, is to make clear the meaning of the sentences. So in this case, we are adding um, information or extra information to the sentence. Now, what is the difference uh, or what are the different kinds of modifiers? ¿Cuáles son los diferentes tipos de modificadores? Ya vimos que hay una eh, variación o, o hay varios tipos de modificadores. Entonces, vamos a ver cuáles son los diferentes tipos que existen. So, we have the question. What are the different kinds of modifiers? And this is the last part because we have like 10 minutes, if I am not wrong. Yes, just 10 minutes to, to end the session. As we mentioned about, modifiers can be single words, phrases, or clauses. Um, so in this case, we have three. But also we are going to see like uh, something extra. An adjective phrase can add as a modifier. Adjective phrases are phrases that function as adjectives, which means they describe nouns. Um, you might hear or read that adjective phrases describe adjectives, and this is true. An adjective phrase doesn't replace a single adjective by describing what the single adjective will communicate. But the purpose of an adjective is to describe a noun. And an adjective phrase it describes a noun by providing a more vivid description that a single adjective can. También tenemos lo que son las eh, frases que llevan adjetivos o cuando ya tenemos dos palabras, un adjetivo con un nombre, en este caso, y que pueden funcionar también como modificadores. Eso sí, estas frases que pueden funcionar como adjetivos describen siempre un nombre. Pero eh, estos también pueden describir adjetivos, pero lo que no pueden hacer es reemplazar un adjetivo que está eh, hablando de un nombre. Lo que sí puede hacer es dar extra, eh, información extra 
sobre lo que ya se está diciendo. But we can replace adjectives with these phrases. Ahora, solo vamos a ver algunos ejemplos de eh, adjective phrases that function as modifiers. We have here examples. And we have here. Okay, the building, the building that, that was taller, taller than the others, was prone to power outage. So in this case, the adjective or the adjective phrase is taller than the others. The complete uh, part of the sentence. The second one, our generally aloof, Had surprise surprise us by accepting the new kitten. Okay, in this case, generally a loop is the modifier. Okay. También tenemos cláusulas que llevan adjetivos que pueden funcionar como eh, modificadores y creo que esta ya sería almost the last part. And we have the examples. Oh no, that's another thing. Kiara, a student who had recently transferred Ask about the school testing a schedule. And we mark the word uh, or the phrase a student who had recently transferred. That is the extra information that uh, we are giving about Kiara. And the next one, the service that cuttered our patties just increased their prices.
Okay, so we have here and we mark that's gather our parties. So in this case, we have the examples of the um, adjective phrase and also the adjective clauses. And of course, we can use single adjectives to uh, use as um, modifiers, also the single adjectives. And we already know that there are a lot of words that can function as adjectives. So in this case, we have the last two examples. I want to go to the retro arcade for my birthday. I want to go to the retro arcade for my birthday. And in this case, our adjective is this one, retro. And the last one, they saw a yellow bird in the garden. They saw a yellow bird in the garden. Y marcamos la palabra yellow with yellow color, so that's perfect. También los, eh, la, los adjetivos que, son, que están solos eh, pueden funcionar también como modificadores, porque obviamente esa es la función principal, modificar una oración o el significado de una oración. So, that's eh, the whole thing. Eh, we have a lot of information related to, to the eh, modifiers. Eh, it is like, there exists a lot of information more, but we are going to end right here. We are going to stop this information here and we are going to end this session. So we are ending week number three. We are just going to have four more days to complete this course. So have a really good night and also have a really good weekend and we are going to see each other on Monday. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Bye. See you Monday.